Well, we're running late this morning. It could be my fault because I'm always on time and just start at exactly the right time. So it can't be. I'll have to find somebody to blame later. Kim's not here. I'll, I'll blame Kim. Okay. So if you will turn to 1 Samuel chapter 19. As we go to verse 11. And I want you to remember the background. And I actually, uh, one pronunciation is Michal on that name, by the way. I looked, I did the deep dive, I can't help it. It looks like Michael Mitchell something, it, Michal. Well, yeah, whatever. So the reason, I want you to think about this, this first point. Saul meant that for bad. He said, you know, I will get him to marry her and she will be a snare to him. That's exactly what he said. That was exactly his heart. That's exactly what he wanted, okay? But then, it's interesting because we were in Proverbs, uh, I don't know, six months ago when we started this, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Time is time are hard to keep up with, but anyway, but the, the deal is remember what it says about an undeserved curse flutters away, and I've I've read that scripture for I don't know fifty years, and and only being thirty seven that's quite complicated, but <laughs> but the point being is I've always I said God why did you let this happen why did this happen. Why did this happen like this? Mm -hmm. I don't understand this. Has anybody else ever been there? Yes. Okay. So what the enemy means for bad comes out to our good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do, how, anybody, anybody else in here ever done anything stupid? Okay. <laughs> just, just full disclosure, I might have done one thing or two through the years. Uh, made one, not really wouldn't call it a mistake, but you know, just kind of a, you know, maybe not quite on target. How's that? So that's what Saul tried to do with Michal. And I looked her name up and it comes from a word that means a stream, a brook, a place of refreshment. Now, the Bible says he will give us streams in the desert. That's what he says. And if you're feeling dry this morning, if you're feeling, des des you know, I love the word um, desert because you could, you could be dessert, just change things around a little bit, you know. The difference between maturity and manurity is also just a couple of letters. But anyway, the, the point being is this, guys. What the enemy meant for your destruction, God is turning that around. If we will allow him, if we will trust him, if we will have faith in him, he will turn that around for your good and for the good of those people around you. And you say, Bruce, how is that possible? The Bible's full of it. I don't know what else to say. Okay, the Bible says it's in there over and over. So... And Michal took an image and laid it on the bed and put a cover of goat's hair for his head and covered it with clothes. And so when Saul sent his messengers to take David, she said, Oh, he's sick. He can't come out and play right now. Okay. That's not the King James, but, you know. Uh, then Saul sent the messengers back to David and said, Bring him up to me in bed that I may kill him. And so when the messenger had come in, the image was in the bed and a cover of goat's hair for his head. And Saul said to Michal, why have you deceived me like this and sent my enemy away so he has escaped? And Michal answered Saul. He said, let me go. Why should I kill you? Well, she probably wasn't telling the truth either. Okay. But, you know, I may have stretched it once or twice myself. Okay. So, so David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah. And told him all that Saul had done to him. And him and Samuel went and stayed in Naoth. And guys, I want to tell you. 
this morning when I was, actually I always study during the week and then in the morning I always run over it one more time because you know life's complicated. <laughs> but as I was studying this this morning, I was reminded of a song from 1964. It's called Victory Ahead. David with the shepherd's sling and five stones waited on the field all alone. And guys, as I thought about that, as I thought about him, of course, we've already been there, but him going out there, the whole army, his older brothers, everybody else, everybody else saying, no, no, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. And Saul being the tallest one there and being responsible. And Goliath going out for 40 days saying, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this. And just those threats and those threats. And they were, they, were, they were pushed down to the point of unable to do anything. And Mark Devine, he's a uh, podcaster and he is uh, a SEAL. And I will never forget what he said. He was the first person I heard that said this, and now since then I've heard like four people say it. I don't think they're, I don't know. But the, he says, you know, the, what they teach us is that the opposite of fear is not bravery. And I'm sitting there, he's got my attention then. He's got my attention, I'm going. The opposite of fear is action. Because when you start acting on that, that you don't have time to worry about that fear. That's an emotion. Okay, but action is an action. And so in the middle of that, you know, David took action. So they're going to kill him. And he could have sat there and said, well, you know, God, if you want him to kill me, I'll just let. No, he took action. He left, didn't he? Okay. So then David fled. He went to his mentor. He went to his person he had received his anointing from, okay, which is Samuel. And went to Naoth. And it was told to Saul, take note, David is at Naoth at Ramah. Then Saul sent his messengers to take David. And when they saw the group of prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as leader over them, the, sp the spirit of God fell upon them. Now, I want you to think about this. This is pre-Pentecost for you theologians, okay? For you guys that say, well, you know, I know, you know. Or, this is pre-Pentecost. And the Spirit of God was so strong among, and this was, uh, Naoth was the place where he had the school of prophets, okay? And what that means, when you translate that, that does not mean a actual, a learning facility. What it is the same word that's taken from a school of fish, okay? What happens is, is they, they come there to be in the presence to worship God, to do that in the presence of Samuel and to receive that anointing then to go forward and do what they're supposed to do. So it is a school, okay, but it's not, they're not sitting there on a chalk. I don't know what they used back then, but whatever, scroll, you know, uh, IBM computer, whatever. Okay, so, but anyway, interestingly, as they get close to that, so they prophesied likewise, and Saul sent message again, and the third time, and they got there and couldn't complete their message. This, listen, the second point this morning is not very complicated. Stay in the presence of the Lord. There is protection in the presence of the Lord. Okay. You say, well, you know, I'm a Christian and bad things happen to me. Yeah, well, you know, read the, we'll be at Acts in about an hour. Uh, read it. Okay. Yes, bad stuff happens. There's always a war going all the time. Okay. This is a, a warship and not, it ain't the love boat. I wish it was. But um, I can't remember that theme song. I have to think about that. I might get that on a little box I can push and hit the, the theme of love or whatever it was. Okay. But they're fled there. They're hiding. And they're just, by the way, I looked, I got on the map, and um, Naoth is just north 
of Jerusalem. Now, when you look at those words, Jerusalem, the place of peace. Okay, so when you're being driven by, you're being tortured by this world, you're being tortured by the enemy, you're being driven to fear and doubt and shame and all those things, guys. Listen to me. Head toward the place where peace lives. Peace lives in the city of God, which is his presence. And I don't mean we need to get a boat and all go to the real Jerusalem, okay? What I'm talking about is in the spirit. I guess you type a type of plane, whatever. Okay, uh, airfoil, I don't know, whatever. But, or I'd like to have one of those things like they had on Star Trek. We just walk in there and you and then you pop out somewhere. Wouldn't that save some time going to see your grandbabies? Man, that would be nice. Anyway, you know, work. I'm here. Oh, I'm not late this today because I went through the transporter. Okay. But anyway, but the point being is this. He headed toward peace, the place of peace, and just north of that was where the presence of God was and there's protection there. So he sent the next round of, of, of thugs to bring him home. And guess what? They're prophesying. They can't, they can't do nothing. The presence of God's on them. Then the third, th th third uh, wave get there. They can't do nothing. And, sent, and Saul's like, you know, if you can't get nobody to do nothing right, you got to do it yourself. Which, you know, I've felt that before. But here's the deal. And he, being Saul also went to Ramah and came to a great well that is Siku, and he asked us, where are Samuel and David? And someone said, indeed, they are at Naoth and Ramah. So he went there to Naoth and Ramah and the Spirit of God, now look at that if you've got your Bibles open, capital S, capital G. Okay, this is not the, a spirit of fear. This is not, earlier it says, talks about a spirit of that uh, from the Lord, an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul and he went crazy and was throwing spears at David, right? This is the spirit of God. This is one of the, one of the Trinity. This is the Holy Spirit. And you say, wait a minute, this guy was a thug. He was crazy. God had taken the anointing off of him. But I want to tell you something. I, have, I was in uh, remote Turkey for a year. 99%, no, no, 98% Muslim, 2% uh, other. Christians is a portion of one of the, one of those 1%. And there's a few other sprinkled in there. And I, one of the things that we did while we were there, I was there for a different purpose, but on our off time, we had a, a, a orphanage that we supported. We'd take them food, we'd spend time with them. And I went to that orphanage, and everybody there is a Muslim. Everybody there is a Muslim. You have to be very careful what you say, where you look, what you do. And but these kids, um, I pull, I come up there, and uh, I'd take my guitar and I'd sing to them and play with them. And and you know, yeah, I think they thought I was Roy Rogers. But anyway, but the point being, I'm not Roy Rogers. No, but anyway, but the point being is this. There was two boys there, and I haven't thought about this story in a long time. There was two boys there, and they were fighting. When I got there, they were fighting. They was fighting. And I walked over there. They wouldn't have known Jesus, the story of Jesus. In fact, we didn't speak the same language. Okay. And I walked over to them, and I said, hey, guys. And I took their hand. And I began to sing praise and worship. And a peace came right there, right then. The presence of God. <laughs> it's like, but, but Bruce, they're not Christians. But Bruce, they're not, they don't even speak English. But Bruce, you know what? I can tell you something. Uh, that's not what it's about. Is God God or not? Okay. We ain't God. We try to tell him what to do, but we ain't God. He's God. And the presence of the Lord equals power and he went there and the spirit of God was upon him and he prophesied and until he came to Naoth and Ramah 
Then he stripped off his clothes. He went plumb crazy and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. And therefore they said, is Saul among the prophets? A lot of people don't like this story. A lot of people's like, why, why, would you, why would you even go into that? The reason I'm going into it is this. There is nowhere you can go that God isn't. That's you say, oh, no, Bruce, oh, no, Bruce. Listen, listen, listen carefully. As I was studying, I'm not quite caffeinated enough, I'm sorry. But here's the deal, because, you know, I like to stir it up. But anyway, but the point being is this. Daniel was in an occultic country surrounded by soothsayers, wise men is one translation, okay? None of them were serving Yahweh, okay? They were not. They were all kind of, and let me tell you something. He then rose to prominence because God is the God of gods. Amen. Is that what the Bible says? He is the Lord of Lords. He's not just a God, okay? He is the God. He is holy, righteous, and wonderful from the beginning to the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Creator. He is God. You say, well, why don't he just take all these other little G's and go like this and go like this and just get fallen angels and what, you know? Yeah, well, he's going to. <laughs> But uh, evidently, his time period is not my time period. I'd had this wrapped up already and would be sitting eating at the table. Okay, so, but he know he's God, right? Amen. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. And uh, then they're all looking around and said, is Saul among the prophets? Well, we'll see. If you know this story, you'll know that, um, well, Okay. Let's go ahead and go there. I was not going to go there. I love um, to go to a wonderful, spirit-filled uh, praise and worship service. I love to go to a place where, you know, God is, the Spirit of God is strong. In fact, I was, I went to a place like that yesterday. It's right there, standing right there. I was praying there yesterday, and guess what? And I love that. The Spirit of God, you know, it was there, and, and I love that. But I want to tell you something. What we have many times gone for the experience and then forgot about the relationship. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because yeah. covenant is not an experience. Okay? Covenant is a relationship. So... There is a huge one back in the old days, very old days, when they made covenant. It was a big deal. Two people come together. They would have, have butcher animals. They'd have a covenant mark. They'd, they'd swap. Uh, they'd do vows, curses, uh, you know, and blessings on one another. All this would go on. You know, if you don't follow this, it's going to happen. The sand of a, or the fleas of a million cam of camels will jump on your neck. You know, whatever. Okay. All... <laughs> So just just fleas, no big deal. You've been to a flea market. I mean, anyway, but the point, but the point being is this, guys. That was the ceremony, but that's not covenant. And that was emotional. Can you imagine? You know, two men or, or a valor coming together and saying, when when David and Jonathan made that covenant, and and we'll get to that in six months if we ever get there. Uh, if the Lord didn't come back first, but. Anyway, when they when they cut that covenant and they swap uh, coats and and that relationship though went all the way till uh, till Mephibosheth after Jonathan was died that covenant was still going that was the relationship it wasn't the ceremony he didn't look back and say well we need to go back to the ceremony no it was the relationship so here's the deal just because people have religious experiences doesn't mean that they're enjoying everything they could enjoy by walking in the covenant with Christ. So, here's the deal. It's uncontrollable. And 
the spirit of God. Now it is subject to the prophet. Don't ever think he's not. I just couldn't help myself. Yes, you can. Okay. But here's the deal. The bottom line is this. We need to take the presence of the Lord everywhere we, we go. You say, well, you know, God couldn't do anything here. God couldn't do anything here. I'm going to tell you something. God's God. And he just proves that in this uh, verse. And uh, here's the deal. If you don't like that, uh, you can cut that part out and have a Jeffersonian Bible where you just got the parts you like. Okay. Or you can go to the buffet. You know, you can just... just you can go to the buffet and they'll have shrimp, chicken, and all that on there. And all you want to do is eat the, the little tomatoes off the bill. You know, that's that's up to you. Which tomatoes are good. But anyway. So, chapter 20, verse 3, or sorry, point number 3 is simple to me. Then David fled from Naoth and Ram and went down to where Jonathan says, What have I done? What's my iniquity that my sin before your father that he seeks my life? And Jonathan said, By no means you shall not and die. Indeed, my father will do nothing, either great or small, without telling me. David took an oath. And again, he said, Your father certainly knows that I found favor in your eyes. And he says, Don't let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. And Jonathan said to David, Whatever you yourself desire, I will do it for you. So, here's the deal. Third point is way bigger than it sounds. Jonathan refused to put tradition here and relationship here. He refused it. He would not allow it. Because you say, well, what are you talking about tradition? I'm going to tell you what tradition was. Saul was Saul the king. Was he anointed by God? He Was he put in that place? Well, then that means his son is going to be the next king. That was the tradition of the day, wasn't it? And Samuel, in obedience to God, okay, went outside of, tra outside of tradition. And a lot of times in church and religion and all these things, guys, I'm just telling you that tradition is here and relationship is here. And Jonathan wasn't going to have it. That he refused. He refused it. He said, that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is I am going to be true to my relationship to hear him to God and to my brother, which I've made cup with. Okay, everybody get that? So be careful that your tradition, and we have traditions here, and I like tradition to kind of, you know, our tradition is we start five minutes late. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if we're lucky, it's five minutes. That's, that's on the good weeks. Okay. And the reason that, to me, that Jonathan broke, was willing to break tradition was because he saw the crazy in his dad, didn't he? And I'm sure, listen, remember, we forget this part about Saul because Saul instantly becomes the bad guy, okay? But Saul was anointed by God, and he led Israel to deliverance after deliverance after deliverance. Did he do some good stuff? Okay. Did, was he pretty self-absorbed and pretty crazy and all that? Yes, 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 yes. But here's the deal. Jonathan refused to live in the past and chose to live in the present. Are you with me? Okay, many religions, many churches, many traditions, they have to, it, well, you know, this guy said this, this guy said this. Listen, I want to know what God's saying right now. This word is alive. It's alive. What's he saying right now? And you say, well, God never changes. No, but do you think you have absorbed all the knowledge of God? Boy, you're pretty arrogant. Because I'm going to tell you something. You don't know everything. And you may know more than me, but that ain't saying much. Okay? So. Anyway. So, 
Here's the last little stream of stuff. So the focus of Jonathan, the focus of David, the focus of Samuel, even with all of this bad stuff going on, is there bad stuff going on now? Yes. Is there bad stuff going on now? Yes. You know, part of my job is every day I read everything bad that's happened wherever I'm working and check the reports and I read, you know, and that's part of my job. And, you know, well, you didn't spell that right. And, well, you know, that, that's not the right charge on that. You know, that, that's part of my job. Okay. So do you think I get a little view of, of debauchery and a little view of people maybe not doing just what they should? Okay. But what's this? Okay. My focus cannot be on that. My focus is... If I focus on the giant, say this country is going to hell in a handbasket, this country is doing that. If that becomes my focus, then what happens? I go right behind my focus. You ever drove a boat? I, I haven't drove one much, but I can tell you that uh, the first time I drove a boat, I didn't realize you need to watch where you're going. Okay, because I mean, it's a big lake. You know, actually, I was in the river the first time. It seemed like a big river, okay? But, you know, I might be talking over here, and this is the old tiller style now. This isn't this, okay? And I'd be looking over there, and, and I'm going, you know, and, and no, you need to look where you're going. And where we're going is victory, victory ahead. We need to keep our eyes on the victor who has beat death, hell, and the grave, Okay, and it's going to reign forever with the new heaven and new earth. That needs to be our focus versus, well, you know, I don't think that. And I think gas is going to go up 25 cents. Well, you know, I pumped it at 29 cents a gallon. Uh, but I was getting rich at the time. After they took out the 10 cents for so-called Social Security, uh, I made 90 cents an hour. Man, I was wearing it out. I, was, I don't know what I did with all that. Of course... Uh, Marlboro's was 45 cents, so you could do, you know, it wasn't that bad. You could still buy Texas Pride beer for 95 cents, a six-pack. So, I mean, I was okay at 16, you know, when, when would that be okay with those prices? Okay, so, oh, and uh, I'm sure groceries were cheap too, but Mom and Daddy bought them. They didn't know about the Marlboro and the Texas Pride. So. All right. So here's the deal. When David was pushing this, when he was pushing himself, when he was, he was saying, you know, I'm going to focus on what he's, my anointing, I'm going to focus on this. But he did. He told his, his, his uh, covenant brother, hey, this guy's trying to kill me. Okay. And as I looked at this, I went all the way back to David's defining moment. We're going to talk about this for Six minutes, we're going to quit. Promise. Maybe. Okay. What was it to me, when you think of David, many people immediately go to Bathsheba, and we'll be there in six months or whatever. But um, we, they immediately think about, you know, this right here. But let me tell you, the defining moment for me in David's life was this. When he saw Goliath, and instead of doing what everybody else did, I have a friend who is a uh, instructor on the national level um, for uh, peacekeepers. And he has a, a paragraph that he says in some of his classes. He said, when they, when they look at all the active shooters, when they look at all the stuff, when they look at all of the things that has happened, um, the difference between calamity, major calamity, and just my, where way less people get hurt or die is one man or woman making a decision. Mm -hmm. And he described one of these last incidents up north, and he said, these two men decided, they said, you know, they looked at each other and they said, well, this is a good, as good a day as any to die. 
but we can't let this keep happening. And they ran into that building looking for that shooter. And while they were running, one of them was hit and knocked down and the other one never even looked back. He just went forward and took him out and that was it. One man making a decision, one woman making a decision. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, this is not going to be what happens. It's not about me. It's about others. And I want to tell you something. We've kind of forgot some of that because, you know, when the Internet goes off, there may be a riot. But anyway, so that was his defining moment when he says, I'm going to do something about this. But then he reached up there as he's walking through. As he's walking through, he goes by a brook and takes five smooth stones. And I'm going to, I'm going to start on this real quick. And I'm going to give you all of them, and you can look at them this week, and we may come back. But anyway, but watch this. The first thing he did when he was talking to uh, Saul, he said, Well, you know, I got attacked by a bear one time, and I took him down. I got attacked by a lion one time, and I took him down. He, and the first thing is the stone of the past. And you, some, some past stuff you need to just throw out and forget about. But I want to tell you something. Has God ever answered any, any prayers for anybody in this room? Raise your hand. If he's answered any prayers, I'm going to tell you something. He has answered some prayers in my life. And if I'm not careful, I'll forget it. Because I'll just go to the next problem. Okay. We need to remember the things he has done in the past. The things he's done in the Bible. And study and, 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 and focus. And then the second stone is the stone of prayer. They all start with a P. This may help you. Uh, the second one is prayer. And I want to tell you something. You need to be praying. You need to be praying. You need to turn that phone off, turn, you know, whatever off, get in a quiet place and pray and seek him. And, and you know, take your Bible and take your notebook. That's my advice. That's not a religious thing. But I want to tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've been uh Wow. A notebook. Was, or, you know, here's, my, here's my expensive notebook. I think a bill came in this. I might ought to see if I paid it. I'm, I'm praying and seeking God, and I said, Oh, I've got to write that down. I've got to write that down. You know why I had to write it down? Because you know what? It's important. Because, you know, I've only got a 20-pound sack. If you're getting 30 pounds of taters, 10 of them's going to fall out. Okay? So... The, 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 the stone of prayer. The, sec, the third one is the stone of priority. And David's, David's priority was, that the, was the reputation of God. He said, when he was going on him, he said, he said listen, what's the, what, God, what's everybody thinking? We're the God, you are the God of angel armies and you're our God. And this guy's just down there holding us all captive. The reputation. And, and listen, what's, what's your priority? And I, and I want to tell you, my priority is that I would be obedient to him. My priority, I've been praying this prayer for 40, 50, I don't know, a long time. I'm only 37. I can't do the math. But here's the deal. My prayer, and you'll hear me say it probably before this day is over, is I want to be the man that God has called me to be. How many times have you heard me say that? Hundreds? I mean, I want to be that man. And I'm going to tell you, it's a day-by-day -day walk. It's a it's a choice-by-choice -choice, uh, thing. And I wish he could just, so, so one of y'all would just lay your hands on me, and I'd fall down and wake up. I'd be the God, man God made me. But it seemed like he's just doing a lot of grinding before I could fit that square peg in that round hole. But anyway, but listen, I, that is my priority. And then I want to tell you something. is the, the next P is passion. That next rock was passion. And he was passionate to do it then. Not say, well, someday I'm going to get me a rock and go down there and kill that giant because, you know, you know, I'm some of these days, well, I'm going you know, to get down there and get after that. But, you know, right now I'm busy. They got a sale on chicken at Porter's, you know, or summer something. <laughs> Sun, yeah, okay. Everybody thinks that we maybe get a little enumeration for bitches and them. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my uh, food reference. Chicken and uh, summer fit. Okay. So, but that passion calls us to do action instead of inaction. And then the last one is this. There's a lot of theories about those five stones. But you know, Goliath had four giant brothers. 
And I don't know if David knew that or not. It don't say, I'm not going to say he did. I'm saying, I mean, it is possible. I mean, you know, if you had a bunch of guys over nine foot tall, you might talk about it, you know, at the boys club or something, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know, but he got five stones. Or maybe he said, you know, just in case, you know, you know, I missed once, you know, but I, I don't know. But that last one was persistence. Don't quit. I don't know of anybody who has ever won a race that dropped out halfway through. Are, is that going to happen? Are you going to say, oh, here he comes, the quitter. Yay! No, that doesn't happen much. So don't quit, guys. Don't give up. Don't stop. And, Father, I thank you so much for your word because your word is a lamp and a light to our path. Lord, let these simple words, these simple, Father, directive things, let us know, Lord, that your presence is here now and your presence is with us as we go. We don't have to fear, Lord, that you are God. And Lord, let us remember, Lord, that your presence is powerful. And Father, let us be covenant brothers and sisters to each other, Lord. Walk together, Lord, and let us take what you called us to be, do, say, and that we do that, Lord, in joy and walk in this path with you. And Father, thank you. Thank you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. See you in about 40 minutes. Take care.